Hi, this is Debbie Boyer, and in this video segment, we're going to talk about one of my new favorite instructional tools, ThingLink.com. ThingLink is a website that will allow you to bring in an image or a photo and then make it interactive by tagging video links and web links, primary documents, uh, all kinds of things you can link to from the image. It's a great engagement tool, but it provides all of your content in one place. You can add content and keep building upon it. You can share it with others. It's just an awesome tool. When we look at www.thinglink.com, we can just look down at the, the bottom and see some examples, or we can search by specific topic. You don't have to have an account to be able to browse and look, but you do have to have an account to be able to create, create your own. You would go to Join Now in the top right-hand corner to set up an account, or since I already have one, I'm going to click on Login and type in my email address that I use to set up my account and my password. And when I click on Login, I'm going to enter the site and be ready to start using thinglink.com. When I look at this, there's an area for me. That's how I know I'm logged in. And when I click on me, you're going to see the thing links that I have previously created. I can go in at any time and edit these and add more content or take things off or change things. But if I want to create my own, I'm going to go to the Create icon in the top right-hand corner. And the very first thing I have to do is pull in an image and be able to start using that. I would recommend using an image that you have saved to your hard drive or your device and pull that in. There is an opportunity to pull in from a web URL link, but if the web link were to change, you would lose your image and not be able to edit. So my suggestion is upload from your hard drive and just click on Choose an Image. I saved an image of the Battle of the Alamo and I'm just going to click on that and you'll see it's working. It says it's successfully loaded and you give it just a minute and it'll pull in the image that I saved from the internet. It's a little bit smaller and I would like it to fill the canvas and so I'm just going to choose fit over on the side and make it full screen on the canvas. The first thing I'm going to do is title this. A lot of people forget to add a title and it, it will just stay as my interactive image. But we're going to call this one the Battle of the of the Alamo. And we can put your name in there or not. You'll have your name underneath with your account. But once we have that set, then we can start adding tags to the image. And to add a tag, all I'm going to do is click once on the image and it lets me choose the icon that I place there. And I'm going to choose the icon and have my kids start by watching a video. I'm going to choose the play icon button because that's going to denote to my students that it's a video. And I'm going to be specific about that each time I use this. And below, I'm going to, in the description, I'm going to say, watch this video on the Battle of the Alamo. And then I'm going to put a link in here of that video. And so when I go out, I have this open ready to, to use. And I'm going to take the link of the YouTube video, click once on it, right click and copy, and then go back to the um, thing link and right click and paste in that area. If I use a YouTube video, I have to realize that it's blocked at school, so you'll have to think about what you want kids to watch as a whole group, what you might want them to watch as individuals on their BYOT devices or their iPads. And then once I have that, I'm going to click on save the tag. When I do that and I click on save for the whole project, you can see that now I've added the video tag here in the top uh, left-hand corner. When I click on this, it's actually going to let me click on the video. And the thing I like best is that the video starts playing immediately right on this site and doesn't take me out to another site. So I keep everything contained in one place for my students. I can exit out of that at any time. And because I'm the editor, the creator of this, I can go back in and edit this image. Now, I love this link. I love the play, but I want to move it over a little bit. And then I'm ready to add my second tag. And my second tag might be a primary document that I want the kids to, to look at. 
and read and primary documents are so huge for our students to learn to to uh, work with. So I'm going to click on this icon and instead of using the play it's not going to be a video it's going to be an article and because we love to learn new information I'm going to choose a heart. Whatever I do there I'm going to be consistent in all the ones that I create. So my description might be um, explore this primary document which is a, a letter written by William B. Travis and I could give more information if I wanted and then I'm going to go out and the letter that I have for the primary document I'm going to copy and paste that link as well and then we're going to save the tag. So right now I have a link to a primary document and I have a link to a video and this time we're going to add just a question for kids to think about. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change it to be a question mark. And in this one I'm not going to add a link at all. I just want them to think about what are the major contributions of William B. Travis. That actually is something that is built into our curriculum and is very important. So I've got a question for them to think about. They might turn to a partner and discuss that. They might write an answer on an index card. I can put any kind of directions that I want into um, the description when I'm adding the tag, but that would be up to you as an instructor. The last thing I'm going to do and be consistent about is to use a target that I want the kids to produce at the end of all of this learning. So I'm going to click, I'm going to add a target because this is what I want kids to show me that they know. And instead of a link, we're going to use a question from our curriculum. It's actually a performance indicator from our curriculum. And I'm just going to paste that in there. And it says create a one-page newspaper describing an individual event and issue concerning the Texas Revolution. Include a map and an illustration. Now I could have said on one of the circles is to create a map, another one to create an illustration, and then my target might only say create a one-page newspaper describing an individual event and issue concerning the Texas Revolution. So I love the way this all ties together. When I save the tag, it saves it out on the, on the image. I can move and edit this around. I can also click on one and hit the trash can over in the bottom left hand corner and take that totally off. But when I'm ready and have it like I want, I'm going to click on save and I now have a new learning piece interactive with video, web articles, primary documents, questions I want kids to discuss with others and a learning target that they will produce when we're through. I can go back in and edit this at any time. If I don't like it at all, I can delete it from the trash can here. And it's just a great way to have kids interact with your curriculum. When I want to see it again, when I log in and go to me, you're now going to see that I have the three that I created before, but now I have the Battle of the Alamo. When I get ready to share this out with others while the Battle of the Alamo is open, I am going to share the web link for the Battle of the Alamo. I'm going to highlight it, right click and copy and I could email you that link. I could post it to my website. I could tweet it out. I can uh, share it in a variety of ways. We create QR codes so that our kids could scan it and use it with the iPads because this does uh, work with iPads and BYOT. So there's all kinds of ways to share it out. If I were a PLC, I might create one uh, for the Battle of the Alamo, but then someone on my PLC might create another one uh, for later uh, content coming up, and we could all benefit from, from using this from school to school and classroom to classroom. I hope you have a great time browsing and discovering and creating. It really is a powerful tool for our students. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. So give me a call or send me an email. I would love to see what you create. So share that link with me and let me see how you're using it. Hope you have a great day.